welcome to another episode of Energy Express. I'm your host, Zach Harold, and once again, we've made it through another week of programming, which means we get to visit Amy on her farm and learn all about a new fruit or vegetable. Let's see what she has for us this week. Hi friends, Miss Amy here with West Virginia University Extension Service Family Nutrition Program. Welcome to Learn, Grow, Eat, Go. Today on the show, we're gonna talk all about zucchini. Do you know which part of my plate zucchini goes on to? That's right, zucchini goes into our vegetable category. Zucchinis provide our bodies with a lot of dietary fiber, which helps us go to the bathroom, protein, which helps us build strong muscles, and vitamin C, which helps us have healthy immune systems. So, zucchini is green, and it grows here in West Virginia. Let's explore them. On the outside of the zucchini, they feel very, very smooth. You can see the stem of the zucchini, where they were growing. Let's take a look inside. The flesh of the zucchini is green, while the inside portion of the zucchini is white. You can see it starts to make moisture as soon as you cut it. Zucchinis have a lot of moisture to them. And on the inside, there are small seeds. Let's take another slice. On the inside, zucchini feels very moist. So we know we can find zucchini at the farmer's market in the summertime and at our grocery store, but how do zucchini grow? Where do they actually come from? Let's go explore a farm to find out how zucchini grow. Zucchini grows low to the ground and the plant gets very large leaves. The plant will develop flowers which get pollinated and there's two types of flowers, a male flower and a female flower. You can tell the female flower because it has a little bump behind the base. That bump, once pollinated, will actually turn into the fruit of the plant, or as we know it, the zucchini. Zucchinis live life in the fast lane, and they need to be picked often. Visit your zucchini plants every day and make sure to keep an eye on them because they grow fast. When they are about four to five inches long, zucchinis can be picked. When you go to the local farmer's market, farm stand, or grocery store, choose zucchinis that are smaller in size that are dark green, firm, and have smooth skin. Zucchinis can be refrigerated for up to five days. To prepare zucchinis, make sure you rinse and trim the ends of the zucchini. They can be eaten raw, blanched, steamed, sauteed, roasted, or grilled. Today for story time, we're going to read Planting a Rainbow, written by Lois Elhert. Every year, Mom and I plant a rainbow. In the fall, we buy some bulbs and plant them in the ground. Orange tiger lily bulbs, red tulip bulbs, orange tulip bulbs, yellow daffodil bulbs, blue hyacinth bulbs, purple crocus corn, and purple bearded irises rhizomes. We order seeds from catalogs and wait all winter long. Flocks, morning glory, zinnia, aster, cornflower, marigolds, and daisies. For spring to warm the soil and sprout the bulbs. Then it's time to go to the garden center and select some seedlings. Poppies, violets, pansies, ferns. We sow the seeds and set out the plants and soil. 
and watch the rainbow grow and grow and grow. We have some red flowers, tulips, carnations, roses, and orange flowers, tulip, zinnia, tiger lily, and poppy, and some yellow blooms, daisy, marigold, daffodils. We grow something green, ferns, and some blue flowers, morning glories, hyacinthia, and corn flowers, and some purple flowers too. Crocus, phlox, iris, violets, asters, and pansies. All summer long, we pick them and bring them home. And when summer is over, we know we can grow our rainbow again next year. The end. Besides eating our fruits and vegetables, it's important that we get physical activity every day. Let's go see what fun activity Miss Shannon has for us to try. Hi everybody, I'm Miss Shannon and today for our physical activity, we're gonna be doing nature's yoga. First, we're gonna to pretend to be a tree. Stand on one leg, bend the other knee and place the sole of your foot on your inner calf. Sway like a tree in the breeze. Now let's do the other side. Now let's pretend to be a frog. Come down to squat with your knees apart and arms resting between your knees. Touch your hands to the ground. Now jump like a frog. Now let's pretend to be a seed. Sit back on your heels and bring your forehead down to rest on the floor. Pretend to be a seed in the garden. Now let's pretend to be a butterfly. We're gonna sit down with our legs crossed and we're gonna breathe in and out as we lift our arms up and down. And now let's do it again. First, we're gonna to pretend to be a tree. Stand on one leg, bend the other knee and place the sole of your foot on your inner calf. Sway like a tree in the breeze. Now let's do the other side. Now let's pretend to be a frog. Come down to squat with your knees apart and arms resting between your knees. Touch your hands to the ground. Now jump like a frog. Now let's pretend to be a seed. Sit back on your heels and bring your forehead down to rest on the floor. Pretend to be a seed in the garden. Now let's pretend to be a butterfly. We're gonna sit down with our legs crossed and we're gonna breathe in and out as we lift our arms up and down. Thanks friends for joining me for Nature's Yoga. I hope you had fun. Hi friends, so today we are going to make paper flowers. And the reason we're gonna make paper flowers is because we wanna be able to demonstrate how the stem sucks up water and nutrients from the plant. So you can see this one I made, we put it into some water with some food dye and it has started to suck the water up the stem towards the top of the plant. So let me show you how to make this. The supplies that you'll need are two sheets of tissue paper, and I cut each sheet into four squares. So then you end up with eight squares. Also need scotch tape, water, and food dye. Let me show you the first step. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to make the stem. So you wanna lay four pieces of your tissue paper together 
and start to roll them at an angle all the way across. Like so. Then you're gonna take a small piece of your tape and secure them back to the beginning or to themselves onto the stem. You did two. Next, to make the flower portion, you're gonna take four pieces, your four squares, and we are going to accordion fold these or fold them back and forth. So you start one direction and then fold it back on itself and continue this all the way down the tissue paper. It's almost like making a fan. So the next step is to take our stem and attach it to our flower. And you can do this by simply placing it on top and folding it over towards the center and using a piece of tape. To secure it back to the stem. Like so. Then where we have our four pieces folded here, we can slowly start to pull these apart. Be careful, it rips very easily. If it does rip, that's okay. It gives it a little more character. Just pull them apart. Like so. If you happen to have the food dye and the water, you can put it into your vase and then just simply place your stem in and it will slowly start to suck up the stem and you'll be able to see how the stem transfers the water and the nutrients to our plant. The reason I chose to do this in white was because I wanted to be able to see the water and the nutrients move through the plant, but you could use colorful tissue paper to make the top. So you can see in this flower, we've let it sit for a day, that it has moved completely up the stem and it's starting to slowly get into our petals of our flower here. It's important to understand that all parts of the plant work together. So the leaves are important to help start the process of photosynthesis and the stems kind of act like an artery, like in your heart, like a vein, to help move the nutrients up and down the plant to where it's needed to keep your plant healthy. If you get to do this activity, have your parents take a picture and tag us on Facebook or Instagram. Let's go visit Molly in the kitchen and learn how to make zucchini pizza. Hi, I'm Molly with West Virginia University Extension Family Nutrition Program. And today, I have a special guest in my kitchen. It's my mom. This is Sarah. And we are going to be making zucchini pizzas. Now, for this recipe, we have already washed our hands and our cooking surfaces, so we are ready to get started. I have already sliced my zucchini into rounds. If you could hand me that bowl. Thank you. Now, zucchini grows prolifically in the garden. Sometimes there can be too much of it. And we're just gonna lay our rounds down on a parchment lined cookie sheet. You wanna do some? Mm -hmm. Want me to do it on your plate? Yeah. Now zucchini is high in fiber, high in B6, high in vitamin A. It really takes on the flavor of whatever you cook it with and it is really good with pasta sauce and pizza sauce like we're gonna see today. 
So I've got my zucchini all ready to go. Do you want to hand me the sauce and the measuring spoon? I did a shortcut and I've got some jarred pizza sauce. I'm going to put just a little dollop on my zucchini. And it's a lot of fun to cook with your parents at home. Makes it go faster. And you have a guaranteed lunch date. And once we've got our sauce on our zucchini, we're gonna add the toppings. Best part of the pizza. So right here we've got mozzarella cheese, we have sliced black olives, we have some mushrooms, and we have some diced green pepper. So of course you can make this your own and add any veggies that you would like to. And I'm going to, we'll do the veggies first and then add the cheese on top. All right, so I'm gonna add some green pepper and mom, you can start with black olives or some mushrooms. And this is nice because um, the black olives are pre-diced from a can, so no knives needed. So sprinkle on some peppers. I'm not gonna put it on all of them. And then we can switch places. I do love black olives. Do you remember what I used to do with black olives, Mom? What? At Thanksgiving. What did I do with black olives? Ate them all. Ate them all. <laughs> but I'd put them on my fingers, remember? <laughs> like the big ones, I'd stick them on oh, my fingers. Oh, yeah. From the relish tray. <laughs> yeah. Food safety was not taught at the McCorkle household. Um, now I'm going to do some mushrooms, and this is another great part that the kids can do. Just break up some pieces of the fresh mushrooms and sprinkle those on top. Now our zucchini we didn't peel. It is a nice, soft summer squash, so the peel is edible and packed with a lot of our fiber and vitamins. Looks good. Now I'm going to add some cheese. This is low skim shredded mozzarella, so we've saved on a little bit of fat there. But you could use any type of cheese that you may have on hand or that you like or use a variety of cheeses some yellow and some white. I'm just going to try to pile it all up there. Okay, I've got my zucchini all topped with our yummy toppings and the cheese added. And now I'm ready to put this in our 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes until it's all nice and bubbly. You. My zucchini was pretty small, so it's a good idea to judge how long you cook this based on how big or how small your zucchini is. So as you can tell, this is nice and toasty and brown and the cheese is melted perfectly, so I didn't want to go much longer than that 15 minutes at 400 degrees. So I'm ready to try one. Are you ready to try one? It looks so good. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna take this one. Mm. What a great snack or an appetizer to serve at your next party. They taste just like pizza. Mm -hmm. And this would be such a fun activity for your kids to help with 
Everybody make your own zucchini pizza. Thanks so much for stopping by my kitchen today. And I hope you check out our webpage for the complete recipe and subscribe to our YouTube channel to see all of our video uploads. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today on Learn, Grow, Eat, Go. I hope that you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us for another week of Energy Express programming. We'll be right back here Monday, and we hope you will too. We're in Hernshaw, West Virginia, the mushroom capital of West Virginia, and this is Hernshaw Farms. This is Sam Umstadt, uh, Chief of Production for Hernshaw Farms, and I'm George Patterson. I sort of run the place. Oh, this is a mushroom block. Uh, so it's essentially a combination of soybean hull and sawdust uh, and some secret ingredients. Um, you know, you gotta keep some things secret. And we sterilize it so it goes under this, in this big huge barrel, which actually is just right over there. Uh, you know, it creates all this steam, it puffs up. You know, and then after 12 to 16 hours at 200 degrees, you know, you've got these blocks that are completely sterilized. So all the bacteria inside is killed and it, got, it gives room for our mushroom mycelium to grow. Um, so what we do is we break this up, break this up, take it and put it in one of these. Take this essentially and just put it in this bag. That's a mushroom block. Then it's moved to another room which is warm like this one where they sit in kind of like a warm hug for you know around a month. You know, the mushrooms are growing, the mycelium is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, so we'll wait for these to get, these are close to pinning. And so when it pins, we'll put it in the, uh, into fruiting um, and open the bag up. So that way it can get some, um, get oxygen and then, and then get water and then it'll, it'll fruit and we'll see some mushrooms. Um, and then this is where they fruit and they go through flushes or different stages. You know, they'll, they'll fruit and we'll get mushrooms and then we'll harvest and then, you know, sometime later we can get a, another flush or another round of, of, of mushrooms. Yeah. So, you know, it's not just like you, you pick the carrot once, you mushrooms, you pick them two or, two or three or four or five, or put on some gloves and you just go in there and just pick them off the block it's, and put them in, in the crate and there you go. And then it goes into our fridge. Um, it's really clean and I actually don't want to step in there because my shoes are dirty. They're on your table or your local restaurant's table really, really soon. Say, say they didn't sell at the market this week, they, or that week, you know what I mean? They go right into the dehydrators. Actually, we sell a lot of our dried mushrooms and we ship them all across the country through uh, Etsy and I have our own online retail. Um, so that's really a, a big part of our business. In college, when I was bored, I would try to figure out solutions for things to do on Mineland. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily my love of mushrooms that brought me to mushrooms. There's not many other people uh, uh, doing this sort of thing, so it's, it's absolutely, you know, it's uh, absolutely new territory. You really have a potential to create something that's perfect sort of for our, our climate and our people and, and a good thing overall, you know?